people of different generations of hair. Wow. But we're all young. <laughs> I think I'm going to say, you know, how I met Tom O'Horgan. Mm. And I, I just have to go into where I was sort of at the beginning of the 60s. I was kind of on my own, by myself in New York, trying to be an actor. And suddenly something clicked. I studied with Lee Strasberg, and suddenly he put me in a Broadway show, Marathon 33, starring Julie Harris. Mm. And one thing led to another, and I was in... Luther, and I was in uh, a few other places, Generation, on stage with Henry Fonda, waiting to go on as understudy, and he was standing over there, and I was standing over here, and luckily, the, the actor came in at the last moment, I didn't have to go on with him. <laughs> Before I used my lines. Anyway, I was this, you know, person who finally was making it as an actor, and I was working on Broadway. Then I was cast in a show called Hang Down Your Head and Die. And there was another actor who was cast, and we were kind of counterparts. Counter, he, was, he was the ill-fated hero in Hang Down Your Head and Die, and I was the ringmaster. Anyway, that show ran one night. <laughs> and we became close friends. Jerry found out about the dream that I had of I always had, since I was a kid, of writing a Broadway musical. Besides being an actor, I wanted to write a Broadway musical. I had trained myself how to write songs, so I could do that. I had never written a, a book show. So Jerry and I teamed up to write hair. That was in about 1964. Three years later, we had a script. And uh, just before that, I... I got a job in a Broadway show called Lion and Witter, and I was playing Richard <coughs> the Lionheart with Robert Preston and uh, and uh, and um, Rosemary Harris, Rosemary Harris mm -hmm. oh. playing my mother and father, and uh, so I was really an uptown kid, and um, Jerry had taken me to experience this new thing that was happening in theater, which was experimental theater, and he he belonged to. A, a theater that was called the Open Theater. Mm, yes. So suddenly my concept of what theater was and what it could be was, you know, broadened and I went down there and I took part in that and one day, I'm going to cut this short, <laughs> one day it was walk, we were walking along, we just heard about this play called Futz that was playing at Cafe and Mama on 2nd <laughs> Avenue. We went up the flight of stairs, we saw this show. And at the end of the show, I turned to Jerry and I said, do you think this could be our director? <laughs> and um, Tom was there and we spoke to him after the show and we told him that we already had a producer, Joe Papp, who was going to put it on his, his first uh, attraction at the Public Theater. And um, we had a date. We had an opening date. We were going to to rehearsal. We needed a director. And Tom was quite enthusiastic and said, I'm sorry, babe, we're taking the La Mama troupe to Europe, and uh, I won't be available. So uh, <clears throat> we went ahead, and uh, Joe Papp gave us, a, um, gave us uh, Gerald, his artistic director, to, to direct the show. Um, could, could, that's all right, everything's fine. <laughs> uh, a sip of water, please. <laughs> So we did, we did hair off-Broadway at the Public Theater, the first show ever there. And um, there was a lot of turmoil around the show. No, um, anyway, uh, when we, the show had a six-week run at the Public Theater, and after that we acquired a producer who moved it to the Cheetah yeah. discotheque. Mm -hmm. And um, Jerry and I had written the show expressly for Broadway, because we wanted to blow the minds of the Broadway audience. And um, so we had an opportunity now to move the show to Broadway. And um, that was the show that was directed by Gerald Friedman and um, choreographed by Anna Sokolov. 
and Jerry and I had rewritten the script by that time, and we said, no, we don't want to take this show to Broadway. We want to take the, a new show, and we want a new director, and Tom O'Horgan was available at that time, so we, the producer finally agreed, brought Tom aboard, and we started all over again. Here we are today. <laughs> In retrospect, I can just say, you know, Tom was just, we wanted to bring that thing that we were singing, seeing in the far reaches of the theatrical community, way off, off Broadway, we wanted to bring it to Broadway, you know, and, and, and he turned out to be the, the perfect person to do it. I mean, at the public theater, we, we had the idea of a nude scene. It was an actual event that took place in in Central Park where two guys at a B and took all their clothes off and it was, you know, an ecstatic moment of exhilaration. It was a lot of fun and we felt it had to be in the show and at the public theater, Joe Papp, you know, we told him about the idea and he said, no, <laughs> no nudity. But when we told Tom and, uh, and <laughs> that was just their thing. So. <laughs> So um, Tom expanded it from two men to the entire cast. <laughs> Purely voluntary. <laughs> and what comes next? Oh, one of the very controversial songs in the show, even though Hair was really about, I think the central thing of Hair is about white men growing their hair long. That was, you know, that was the revolutionary image. But we did have another flavor in the show. And we'll do that flavor tonight. <laughs> and uh, we'll, Antoine Hopper, please. Here comes the eclipse. I cover the white moon. We were, we were. 
But we believed we were, and when the audiences came to see the show, they were sure they were watching real <laughs> a new super reality we And uh, in honor of that hippiness, may I bring Andy here? <laughs> so we can do a little thing. <coughs> Giving away my secrets. <laughs> Since I'm almost 50, I need to break these out, all right? Yeah. <laughs> You're all invited to my party, September 19th. <laughs> Yeah. 